Karen from Black Swan Journals, and it's Flip Through Friday. And Flip Through Friday was created by Christina at Christina's Shack, and do check her out. She's lots of fun. I'll link her channel below. So today I am going to have a lot of fun with you. We're going to admire nature, the wonders of nature. I'm also doing a prompt that is given by Janet Nash on YouTube. I will also link her channel. And every Monday she has a live and picks from her basket prompts. She's very relaxing, very easygoing, no pressure at all. Really, really fun group of ladies. I'm so glad I met them. And this week... The prompts, she gave three prompts this week. Your dream lounge or living room, uh, paint, and the wonders of nature. So I'm working in my blue self-care journal. So I'm going to choose to do the wonders of nature and paint. And this time around, leave out the dream lounge uh, slash living room. Although that's incredibly important to me, um, I just felt like I wanted to, to, to pay some honor and some homage to nature and the wonders of nature. Nature stops me in my tracks. Um, sometimes I'm trying to work and I get distracted by nature. <laughs> I work outside. Um, I'm a gardener, <laughs> so sometimes an eagle will fly overhead, and I can't help but just look up and watch, um, or I'll get distracted by the mountains or the lake, because that's where I live, or I'll get distracted by flowers, because I am a gardener, and I garden with uh, flowers, perennials, trees, shrubbery, um, <clears throat> not vegetables, although I do that at home personally, <laughs> but not for, for work. So what I've decided to do here is I had a piece of junk mail and I had put some gesso on it and let that dry. And then I used these watercolors here to do my first layer of uh, some mountains that I drew and then colored. I set that aside to dry and I come back in later and deepen it up with more color and I show that to you later. And so now I'm playing on another page. I kind of did two pages here. Um, I guess nature is so important to me <laughs> that I chose to do um, like two spreads. <laughs> um, but I have to tell you in particular for blue flowers, the delphinium. It really, really is a wonder to me. Um, the color is amazing. That color blue is seldom found in nature. And that alone is an amazing wonder right there. But also the flower, if you really look at it and just sit still and, you know, look up close or better yet, watch a bee when it's pollinating it. They're just really, really amazing flowers. Very intricate, delicate, beautiful, and they look like little hats, like little little monk's hoods or little witch hats or something, little fairy hats or little bells. They're just beautiful. So here I'm cutting out a page from a book I've been using lately of wildflowers, a vintage book I found in a thrift store and <clears throat> I cut out an entire signature because originally I thought I wanted to use the whole page but then I realized I really only wanted the purple flowers and blue flowers here of the wild delphiniums and the wild monk's hood which uh, the Latin name is uh, a continuum for the monk's hood in delphinium, it's also called uh, larkspur, some people. So anyhow, 
I realized I didn't need to cut out the whole signature, oopsie, <laughs> but I put it aside for future use and I really just wanted that one piece of the page so I, I cut it with the X-Acto knife. And now I wanted to give this image, this digital image over here on the left of that Art Deco lady, I wanted to give her a background of something special. And I had this little doily, but it's too small, so I'm going to end up ripping it in half. But right now I just want to paint it gold. Um, I set it aside to dry. Um, here's all the beautiful blue of nature that we're giving some honor to in wonder, wonderment. Here's an image that I had, um, and it looks almost identical to a maple, sugar maple tree that I have on my property. And um, this image I found, as well as these other images that I'm working with today, on the Graphics Ferry. I am a member there, and so I print there um, pretty regularly. But off to the left, I also have some older papers from, um, I think it's called um, Stamperia, if I'm saying that, uh, pronouncing that properly. I also use some of those papers too. Um, but anyhow, I also tore some white birch from my property to make a little journaling card here with this uh, sugar maple image that I found that looks just like a tree from my property. And I've been loving this ink lately um, from Memento. It's called Lux, and it's a little bit like opalescent and um, has some brilliance to it. And this color is like espresso or something like that. So <clears throat> it's like a, it's like a, or truffle or something like that. Um, but it's it's like a brownish, uh, almost like a gray brown. It's really beautiful, and I'm I'm really loving it lately. So, anyways, I've been using that to pop out my edges and ink around my edges. And here I had this um, tag that I bought some 100% hemp to um, stitch uh, some signatures into journals with. And so I took this piece of um, packaging and I want to make a tag out of it because I love it. Um, I love what it says. I love the colors. I love that it's natural. Uh, I'm figuring out placement here. I like it on this side better. So I end up going with that. So I just want to talk for a minute about the birds that I'm featuring. <clears throat> Oops, hang on, er, <laughs> back up. <laughs> Let me talk about her for a second. So I chose her because I felt like when she was down in the lower left, she was just sort of like looking and admiring, you know, off to, in, in wonderment of the nature of these delphiniums and the birds that are surrounding her. And there's an eagle coming up. Um, shortly as well. So there's an owl, an eagle, and a hawk. Um, so I chose her because she's lovely, she's a goddess, uh, she's just, she looks grounded, she looks like she knows what she's doing, uh, she looks very comfortable in life, and she looks wise, like she has wisdom. And she also looked like she was admiring these lovely, lovely flowers. So anyhow, um, back to the birds. I chose these three birds because what they symbolize to me in, in the world of uh, spirituality, more so like with the universe. And um, of course we all know the owl is wisdom. And I, I just uh, really love that. I'm in my early 50s, um, pushing mid and um, really, really gaining wisdom all of a sudden in life. It's really popping up for me lately. Um, it really came after my mom passed. It's coming with grief. Um, it's an odd thing. It's very odd. Um, I miss my mom um, to pieces, but I don't want to get dark. <laughs> um, I want to stay light. So, yeah, it... Um, what's, what I've been noticing is wisdom has been coming with the grief 
and I've been really coming into my age and uh, just gaining a lot of wisdom lately. So anyhow, I loved her for that reason and the owl for that reason. And then the hawk. Um, the hawk is very important to me right now because I'm learning to, and just actually naturally, I've been sort of like zooming out on my life like the hawk and uh, looking at my life from the bigger perspective and from a bird's eye view from far away and seeing what it needs and not getting too close up and too caught into detail and uh, craziness and things that just don't matter. Um, so when I am the hawk and I zoom out, I, I really do um, grow as a person and I grow um, as myself, like myself starts to grow and I start to self-improve. So that's the nature of the hawk, the significance of the hawk. And then the eagle coming up. Well, the eagle, uh, especially if you see an eagle after a loved one have pa has recently passed, I hear that it symbolizes um, like very quick rebirth. And um, it's just a really beautiful symbol. It's growth. It's um, rebirth. So I had to include the eagle in this spread. And I, I am in wonderment of all of these birds in nature. Um, what they do, what they symbolize, how they survive, the fact they can fly. It's just all so amazing to me. Um, <clears throat> and then the flowers, you know. I don't mean to be so boring with what what wonders are to me for nature but yeah I have to say that that flowers and birds are just they, they're really really stunning if you stop and study them and look at them close up but I had to do two spreads because um, also mountains are just a huge wonderment to me and suns uh, sunrises sunsets so I also did some honoring to those and we're going to play with those soon. So I made a little pocket with her, reinforced the top with some washi tape because it was just copy paper that I printed her out on. So I wanted to make it strong so I don't rip it as I use it. And now I um, inked around the edges of things and I'm gonna glue down this hawk. And I kind of like it sitting on top of the flowers here. And now there was a staple in this paper. I'm feeling it here with my thumb. So I get the idea to remove the staple and place it aside. And then try to line up my stapler with its old staple holes and fasten the pocket with my stapler. And it works out. So I love to blend junk journaling with art journaling, with sort of art therapy journaling and um, self-transformation, self-evolvement, self-improvement. I love blending all of those things. Um, I'm also starting to sew and embroider and slow stitch. So I'll be sort of doing all of those things here and hope that you like it. I also, um, I used to own a flower shop for about 10 years and so I am a floral designer. I'm now a garden designer and, and worker. I get my hands dirty. But anyway, I think I'm gonna do a, a video on making a fresh Christmas wreath, like cutting the greens and cutting the berries and mixing up the greens, not just balsam, like, showing you some really pretty designer ways to make a fresh wreath for yourself. How to bind it and everything. I think I'm going to do that in a couple of days. It's not, it has nothing to do with paper crafts here <laughs> or journaling, but um, hopefully you're interested. I, I thought it, I thought it might be fun.
So here I glue down that little piece of birch onto this little journaling card that I made. I inked all around the edges, inked on the back, glue down the piece that looks like my sugar maple. I just, I couldn't believe it when I saw that. I think it's a gift. Thank you. <laughs> so here, <clears throat> I just decided to cover up um, the little staple there with a little scrap piece of paper I had. And then um, I, I covered up the staple with a little sort of like dark gray gem. But I was toying around with a gold gem and I ended up settling on the darker gem because I like how it sort of spoke to the colors in the hawk. But I couldn't help myself and said I want to add some gold because <laughs> I didn't pick the gold gem. <laughs> um, and I got to give some love to that gold gem that I didn't pick. I feel bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm giving a little gold action here. Um, with some rub and buff and uh, I apply it with a little brush. I go around the hawk. I apply it around the gem a little bit. So I wanted to mention that the delphiniums here are also from the graphics fairy. I printed them out. I fussy cut them with my scissors. I glued them down onto paper. The one I'm touching now, I glued down. I did not, I'm so sorry, I did not fussy cut that one. I just ripped it and then I took watercolor in Payne's Gray and painted the white part of the copy paper. But the one on the left, I did fussy cut with scissors and then glued down onto scrapbook paper. So that's what, what happened with those things because I didn't show that on camera. So here's that eagle I was promising you. Beautiful, so beautiful. I am so, so, so fortunate that eagles are making a comeback. And where I live, I work outside all spring, summer, and autumn into possibly a little bit of winter. And, um... I frequently get to see eagles. And then I also get to see interesting things like 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 crows and eagles and and crows circling and a lot of squawking and then and then I finally slowed down in life and I realized what was going on. And it's when the eagles are protecting their eggs and the crows are coming around and vice versa. I think they come around to get the crows. And, and so I often notice these squabbles in the air and I'll stop working and look up for a while and, and I'll see what's truly going on. And, and then I have understood from nature what's happening just by being still and, and not worrying about silly things that don't matter and just watching nature. I highly recommend it. <laughs> so here, <clears throat> trying to figure out how to fasten that pretty card, journaling card I made with the Art Deco lady who's admiring the giant wonders of the delphinium. And I finally decide that I had this little die cut in my stash and I finally decide to glue that on as sort of a tuck. And so I glue that on and now the journaling card sticks in there in the tuck. And a while ago I had printed out a bunch of sayings that I kind of thought about and printed out things that meant things to me. None of these things am I claiming are my own words they're just things I've heard and I remember or whatever and um one of the things I printed out was the flowers appeared on earth and is that an Emerson quote um is that an Emerson uh I'm, I'm not sure but anyhow um it's pretty common I'm sure many of you know I'm sure everybody knows <laughs> Um, just having one of those moments. 
Um, but anyhow, here I darken up the watercolor that we were doing earlier together. And it, you know, it was pale the first time around. And I want to come up with um, some more saturated, deeper color. And I also want to sort of, um, I don't know, make some lines of demarcation of the sky and the mountains and then the next mountains in the foreground and so on and so on, the ones in the background and try to make them pop as if they were true to life as much as possible. I'm totally new to painting. I just started doing it. Um, I just started drawing and painting. I think I've only draw and painted maybe 20 things. Um, so I'm really new, but having lots of fun. Um, still going to continue to play with stamps and embossing folders and dies. I think I'll always want to use things like that. I love the product that they put out and what they produce. Um, so here I'm just showing you the junk mail. I haven't decided what to do on the other side. I, I'm going to just leave it the way it is and, and think about it. And when I figure out another thing that strikes me with the wonderment of nature, then I'll know. Then I will know what to put on the back. Because right now, I thought about putting a bee, drawing a bee and then painting a bee. Because, I mean, you know, who wouldn't think of a bee when you think of wonders of nature? Um, you know, without bees, we, I don't know if we would really be here. So, um, but then, I don't know, I just, I thought, I also don't want to overwhelm and do too much in one video. Or I don't know if you like it, if you like all, all of this and you want more. <laughs> um, if you'd like to give me your opinion in the comments, please do. And uh, I'm happy to keep pumping out more. <laughs> um, but I'm also, I, I understand if it's like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> rain it back, please. Could you stop? It's overwhelming. Um, I also totally understand that. So here, what I'm deciding to do is have some fun with some more color, even though it's my blue journal. Also, another wonderment to me is um, sunrise, sunset. Here for me in the northeast, I have a sunrise. Um, <clears throat> of course, we have a sunset, but, you know, sunrise is in the east and sets in the west. So, anyhow, um, we have some lovely, lovely sunrises. And it's so great to get up at that time of morning when it's still dark out and the sun comes up. It's just magical. But anyhow, what I'm doing is, um, do you see that little thing of salt in the um, upper left-hand corner? That's some um, little shower favors I made for my daughter's uh, baby shower. She was having a girl, or is having a girl. And I put together some um, little Himalayan salts um, for the shower favor. But anyhow, just take something like that, draw out a circle, um, and then you make a mask. And so I put that down on my paper. I do ink blending. I left all the inks there for you to see the colors. And then um, I just go to town having fun blending. And then I remove the mask, and what that does is it leaves what could be a moon if you want to work with blues and dark colors, but it also could be a sun if you want to work with, with tequila sunrise colors, I call them. <laughs> oh yes, tequila sunrise colors. Ah, I love, love, love. But you could leave it just plain stark white like that. It would be really, really beautiful and very contrasty. But I just want to soften it a little bit. So I go back in with the original squeezed lemonade color. And then I just kind of use finger tool and give it a little bit of the, um, I think it was the, um, Oh, I can't see. I'm looking at a very small screen, but um, dried marigold. Yeah, that's what it is. A um, little bit of that with the brush and my finger. Just to make it look more realistic. You know, the sun is a ball of fire, after all. 
And uh, now I'm just blending it with a little dry paintbrush. No paint at all. This is a completely dry brush. And voila. So now I decide to, this is a journaling card by the way. So the back is blank. And my, I am honoring the sunset as a wonderment to nature. And um, here I have a stamp that is probably more simulating wind, but I feel like it could look like the ocean, so I stamp it up. And I make a pocket, and I end up ripping the pocket, gluing it down, and then putting the sunset journaling card within that pocket. Uh, I stamp it down three times because... The ink, I just didn't get a good enough, sort of like, um, enough color. I wanted deeper color. I wanted it to really pop. I also wanted it to coordinate with the mountain tops on the right hand side of the spread. So then I rip it, I glue it down, and the journaling card goes into the pocket. I use a little piece of scrap paper up on my desk to make a little tag topper for the journaling card. And then that's it. The spread is done and I marvel at nature. <laughs> and uh, I had so much fun doing this. Thank you so much, Janet Nash. I always enjoy your channel, everything you do. I really, really enjoy you. So grateful for meeting you. And um, I'm so grateful for meeting your lovely community that you've gathered and collected. So there's the pocket. I did, e I did ink around the pocket and I used the bottom sunset color, which is um, um, festive berries. No, I think I used Abandoned Coral. I So I didn't use the bottom color because it's the second to bottom color on the sunset. I used Abandoned Coral um, to go around that little tag topper. And just in case anyone's new to this, um, part of... Part of making your own journal and not just buying one at the store for people like me is uh, relaxation, creativity, art therapy, a way to unplug, a way to express yourself, a way to relax, and um, a way to do self-care. So I just wanted to let anybody know that's new and, and looks at this and says, why the heck would you do all this, you know? Um, because it just, for me and people like me, I think it's our way of just relaxing and, and being a creative outlet and, and, and expressing flow. So inside I have a little journaling card that also came, um, that was a digital I printed out and glued down uh, to junk mail and then, or maybe I just glued two digitals together, I don't remember. No, that was a piece of that Stamperia uh, card. So I just glued to the, the digital to the Stamperia cardstock and wrote the, the challenge, which was Wonders of Nature. So when I'm out in nature, I can jot down things I learn. Like when I'm staring at the delphinium up close, what is it that I'm learning? Or when I'm watching the sunrise or the sunset, what is it that I'm learning? Or what comes to me? What messages or gifts or downloads come to me that I need to remember? Because if we don't jot things down, we forget. We, we think we're going to re remember, but we don't. We really don't. We forget. So I'm fussing with it. <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> I think I'm trying. It has not been sewn in yet. We're going to be doing that next. 
um, oops, I take a bite of an apple. Um, so I think I'm just sort of straightening out for you so that I can pick it up and give you a close up because it's not straight yet because it's not sewn in yet. <laughs> We're going to do that next. Cause I'm pretty much done decorating. There's two other, maybe four other pages that haven't been decorated that I'm going to do spreads on about gardening. Um, because gardening is very much self-care for me. But you've, you've probably had enough of the parts series. This is part six after all. <laughs> so um, I think part seven is going to be making a spine and making a cover. And if it's not too long, then sewing in the signatures. If it's too long, then the signatures could be the next part. But I'm just, as usual, going over what we've done together at the end of the video, just so you can see everything we've done. Sometimes when I watch other creators, I always get sad when I don't get to see everything. So I try to do that for you, and I try to, at the ends of the videos and beginnings, give you some close-up shots, too. I hope that's helpful to you. If I hope you enjoy that. I always do when I watch other people's videos. It's so nice to see and admire and appreciate their work. But so here she is. There's a little tag here. A little die cut that I had from the past. And the eagle and any moments of clarity I get in nature. And I often do some extra journaling space on the back of the eagle. And there's not really too much space to journal here, but it's just so darn gorgeous. I just, you know, it's all about admiring nature, so the challenge. So for me, just looking at this page is self-care. It just makes me so relaxed. 